So first off, the question I've asked so many people, how do we expect this arraignment to play out? Look, standard arraignments are very quick. Um, a defendant uh, stands at the bar. Uh, his attorney will uh, declare himself to be the defendant's uh, counsel, enter a plea of not guilty, waive advisement of rights and reading the complaint, and then choose a future date to come back. Uh, there's usually a period of discovery motions that happen between the arraignment and the trial if the case in fact goes to trial. So it's usually a very quick uh, endeavor. Uh, it doesn't take that much time. And there usually isn't the entire world press outside of the courthouse. I was gonna say it's a little bit different, I guess. How does this compare to a normal arraignment for you know your average Joe out there? It is the exact opposite. Um, this is obviously has been said many times, but it should be repeated is unprecedented in American history in almost in what 230 something years. Uh, we've never seen anything like this. Um, the media reports cameras will not be allowed in the courtroom. I think that's a mistake. I think the American people have the right to see this happen live, uh, but it's the judge's decision. It's his call. And so here we go. What are your thoughts on the cameras not being allowed in? You kind of already, you know, voiced your concerns there, but why do you feel that way? Because of the historical, unprecedented matter that we're dealing with. Um, we are used to having uh, high profile cases shown on TV, and I think this certainly qualifies as one. And I think the live cameras allows the American people to see everything that happens and make their own decision as to whether the proceedings are fair, um, what the weight of the evidence is. And this is a defendant like we've never had before. I think his stature as an ex-president should uh, move the judge to allow cameras in the courtroom. I think that's in the best interest of the nation, to be quite honest. What do you think about a mugshot or booking photo? Because it sounds like there won't actually be one taken and released to the public. Well, in New York law, a booking photo should not, or mugshot should not be released unless a person is obviously a fugitive from the law. And number one, number two, the reason for mugshots is in order to identify the person with the crime in case that person becomes a fugitive. That's not an issue here. Um, and so I don't see the necessity for one because I think we have to kind of make a distinction between Donald Trump, the defendant, and as a person and how people feel about him and the fact that he is an ex-president and there's a dignity uh, with that office and being a former, having held that office as well. So I don't know if it's in the best interest of our future as, as a country to have a president's mugshot. And I don't think it's necessary at all. What do you think about the possibility of a potential gag order? How exactly does one work? And is it likely that we are gonna see one in this case? Yeah. The there's been a lot of media reports about gag orders, but I'm not sure why we would need a gag order. Gag orders are usually done in order to protect uh, witnesses and uh, alleged victims in a case and their identity and not to put them in danger or things of that nature. I, most of the facts in this case as far, are well known to the world. Uh, the payment, the payoff, Michael Cohen, we know a lot about this case, from the federal indictment of Michael Cohen a few years ago. So I don't see how a gag order would be necessary. I think if the judge was to issue a gag order, uh, it would require, require a lot of litigation. And also at the end of the day, I don't know if a gag order would work with Mr. Trump. And so several of our viewers here have asked this question now, it keeps on coming in, and I think I know the answer here, but can a gag order issued by a New York court be enforced in another state like Florida if you do have you know, the former president travel from New York to Florida where he is expected to speak later on tonight? It wouldn't be enforced in Florida. It wouldn't be enforced in a Florida court. What would happen, hypothetically speaking, if a gag order is issued today uh, and if Mr. Trump violates it, the court would set what's called an OSC or an order to show cause uh, in order to have contempt hearings and accuse Mr. Trump of being in contempt of court. Now, being in contempt of court can lead to two things, um, sanctions uh, against the defendant or his bail revoked. 
So as far as what we expect to happen next here, could whatever we see happen with this case impact his other cases? Because there are a few other cases against him. Not as a legal matter. Um, both the Georgia investigation, the January 6th investigation are different jurisdictions, the state of Georgia, and the other one is the federal government. And they are so far removed factually from this case that I don't see how they could impact. This isn't a situation where all three cases are factually connected. Um, so they actually are very, very different uh, from the New York case. What happens next? So we know the arraignment is scheduled for this afternoon. He leaves, he heads back over toward Florida where Trump is expected to speak tonight. What happens next in this legal process here? Well, I think what you expect to happen is that his counsel, which have you know, told us this in media outlets, is they're gonna be begin the process of trying to beat the case with motions. There are serious legal issues with this case. I think that's been well documented by legal commentators from the entire political spectrum. And so I expect there to be litigation as to the whether or not this case should even go forward. Uh, and if the defense loses, I expect there to be appeals. So most of the next six months will be spent on motions going back and forth. But I think, look, we have to all come to terms that there is a level of unpredictability, that we don't know exactly what's going to happen because we've never been here before. Yeah, I mean, so many people have said this is a historic situation. We have never seen it happen before. Mm -hmm. As far as how long this could take to go to trial, is there any indicator of whether or not this is going to be a speedy situation or if we should expect this to take, you know, the normal time to go to trial? Right, that's really gonna be up to Mr. Trump and his counsel as to which tactic they wanna take. Um, and obviously this is all complicated because as we all know, there's a presidential election coming up. And before that, there's a primary uh, for the Republican party which obviously complicates everything. So I, it, it really will be up to the fence how long they want this to last. So former President Trump expected to speak tonight outside of his home there in Mar-a-Lago. Is that a good or bad move for his case? If he was, let me see how I can best answer this. If he was a traditional defendant, that is if he was my client, uh, obviously I advise all my clients with rare exceptions never to speak with the media and never to make any statements because anything they say can and will be used against them. This is such a different situation that the normal rules do not apply. And I don't think any attorney can stop Mr. Trump from speaking to his supporters, especially as he is the leading uh, contender or candidate for the Republican nomination at this time. So amid this whole process, when do we actually learn the specific charges against Trump? Sources have released some information about what he's charged with, but when specifically do we find out what those charges even are? Well, we'll find out what the charges are today. When he is arraigned, the indictment will be unsealed and we will be able, all of us, be able to read the indictment and what he's charged with. Now, that doesn't mean we're gonna get to see the discovery or the police reports. Usually those have a protective order and they cannot be released to the public. Uh, we'll see what happens in this case and whether or not they're either released or they are leaked. We'll, we'll see as it happens. But that's the information we're going to get today uh, as, as a nation. And my last question for you here is, you know, former President Trump will appear for arraignment. Is it likely that he's going to jail at all during this process today? He's obviously not necessarily going to have a booking photo taken or released, but we know that he is planning to head back to Florida later on tonight to speak. But he's not going to enter a jail cell at any point today, right? Correct. He will be what's called booked and processed. There will be a period in which his information is taken and he will be fingerprinted but he will not be detained in the traditional sense in, in, in any way, right? There's an element of detention because he has to go through this process, right? He's being made to have his fingerprints taken, his information taken, but he's not going to be put in a cell or anything like that. Let's not forget that as a former president, he has life uh, protection from the Secret Service, and the Secret Service are with him at all times. Even through this process, the Secret Service will be there. 
The Secret Service will be in the courtroom. The Secret Service will be with him as he, you know, enters the courthouse. I, my understanding is going to be underground through tunnels. Uh, and they've been part of the entire negotiations how to do this. They, they have their own job to do, and they take it, obviously, very seriously. What about this is so historic? Why are so many people paying such close attention? <clears throat> because as America, we've had a good run of not prosecuting our presidents and not finding evidence that our presidents or ex-presidents have committed crimes. It has been a, an issue of pride for us that since 1789, this has never happened. And let's be honest, this, this is a blemish uh, on American democracy and American history. And so we're here now, and now the issue is not whether one of our former presidents has ever been charged with a crime. The issue now, and I hope we prove ourselves to be who we are, is whether he receives a fair trial and whether or not the system actually works at this level. All right, Ambrosio Rodriguez, L.A. criminal defense attorney there. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Is there anything else that you want to add about all of this before I let you go? Yes, uh, and thank you for having me. The only thing I, I can say is we've all been listening to people make predictions about what's going to happen. I've made some predictions. Uh, let's take everyone's predictions with a grain of salt because we just don't know exactly what's going to happen. So we should take it day by day. Very true statement there. Thank you again for taking the time to join us. My pleasure. Thank you.